Greetings. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. What you're looking at here is a matchbox number 33B, Ford Zephyr 6. At least that's what it says on the back. And it's not in horrible condition, but as somebody else once said, if I just cleaned it up, that wouldn't make much of a video, would it? The paint is pretty well chipped up in several places. It's got a busted trailer hitch and clearly there's some suspension issues. It's got a crack in the back window that I probably can't do anything about, but it is in need of some cleaning up and so today I'm going to do a straight up restoration of this wonderful old Matchbox toy. So stick around and we'll get right to it. <clears throat> This particular casting is pretty easy. Uh, it has one post and then a little tab in the front. And then I'm going to clean up the burr around the edge of the post so that when I put it back together it'll go a little more smoothly. And drill out the hole for the uh, button screw. And after that it's just a matter of tapping the hole and follow that up with uh, a button screw. And follow that up with some citrus stripper and see if we can get this paint off of here. Um, the first round of stripper did a pretty good job of getting a lot of the paint off, but I actually wound up having to uh, repeat the process to get all of the paint off. So, And once I had the paint off, uh, it was time to give the casting the once over and remove any little bits of paint that were left in any crevices. The casting itself looked to be in pretty good shape. Nothing was bent. Uh, there weren't uh, excessive scratches anywhere. The casting lines were still really crisp. That was what I noticed on the back. It says Zephyr 6. I'll make the assumption that uh, 6 refers to the number of cylinders. Anyway, uh, we'll give the thing a bath in mineral spirits to remove all of the oils from my hands, followed by a good wash in soapy water uh, prior to paint. I decided to use the Tamiya White Primer. Uh, it's not a dark car, it's a lighter car. I figured the white primer would make it really pop. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking at the hood because there was something on the model that had some roughness so I let the primer dry and then I wet sanded a few areas of it and uh, reapplied the primer uh, to make sure that I had a nice smooth base upon which to apply the color pigment. So I was going to do some work on the chassis as well so it needed to have the same treatment uh, a little bit of citrus stripper, let it sit for a little while, followed up by a bath in hot soapy water to get all the paint off of it. And now you need to mark your calendars because I'm actually going to fix a trailer hitch. 
And what I did was take a little bit of the tubing that I typically use to make an axle. And you can see there's still a little like half moon area in the hitch itself. And I cut a piece of the tubing to fit and then using super glue and toothpicks, it was a really fiddly job. I super glued a little portion of that tubing onto the hitch itself. And then uh, I added a little bit more super glue, uh, filled in the hole on the top with super glue, and then I sprinkled the whole thing with uh, with baking soda to uh, give it some added strength and let it dry. And after letting it harden for several hours, I took a nail file and a small metal file I have and uh, shaped the hitch. Uh, to approximate the hitch that was on there originally. I can't believe I'm fixing the trailer hitch. You know, and I thought about cutting it off, but I'll tell you, if there was a car that deserved to have a trailer hitch on it, this was probably it. It was probably one of the times where I agreed with uh, Lesney in putting a trailer hitch on and the fact that they put a metal one on there uh, is something of a testament to me as to how much they wanted it there. The thing that I found ironic is that the plastic ones often last forever and the metal ones typically are broken. But anyway, so uh, we're back in the trailer towing business here. I've made no secret that I think color matching is kind of a myth. Uh, looking around on the internet, I've found versions of this car that tended to be more green and some that tended to be more blue. And I realize that lighting conditions and other things can affect the end result. But the bottom line is, is that there's no real way to know what color these models might have been on any given day. And I believe that to be true. But I have also asserted that I want to be in the ballpark. So let me show you something that I'll often do to determine how to mix my paint. I'll open the program paint in my computer, which is a program that's inherent to Windows going probably all the way back to the beginning. And it's an elementary imaging program. Uh, then I navigate to the photograph I took of the car before I began working on it. I'll use a little magnifier here, make the picture a little smaller. Then I'm going to grab this little eyedropper tool and I'm going to bring that down right in the middle of the hood and take a sample which becomes color one. Then up here where it says edit colors I'm going to open that and on the right hand side you'll see the red, green, blue. And that'll at least give you a sense of what you're trying to accomplish. And in this case, pretty much equal parts green, equal parts blue with a little bit of red. So that's the premise that I'm going to use in creating this paint. There's a lot of things to painting and, uh, you know, here it is with the white primer, which could impact how it ends up. And in the cup, I thought the paint looked pretty good. I started with a base of X2 Tamiya White and added equal parts of green and I actually counted it by the drop and then I finished it off with a little bit of red uh, and here I am laying on the first coat which uh, I've been working a lot on trying to develop better painting skills so uh, I don't have to use uh, quite so much clear coat on the end as a leveling agent so uh, what I've been doing is, is I've been laying on a, a really light first coat and then once I get done with that first coat I let it dry for actually quite a while 
uh, before I lay on a second coat on the premise that if I start spraying onto a coat that's not completely dry, it can actually damage the soft surface of the undercoat. So I don't know, it's just a theory, so watch out, Time Rider's got a theory. Here I am getting the insides of the wheel wells and that's about where I left it after coat number one. So after letting the first coat cure for about 20 minutes, I started to apply a second coat. I had been doing some reading on the internet and uh, the Tamiya paint is kind of translucent so it was suggested by one modeler that you really need to be patient with it and you need to put it on in layers. So the first coat, you let it cure so that the paint surface isn't soft, so that when you're putting the second coat on, uh, you don't have damage to the first coat from the second coat. And I'm also trying to do away with the aerosol clear coats and use Tamiya X22, something used by another modeler named George Hodges who gets really good results with his paint. I would suggest looking up his channel. Uh, but at any rate, uh, this was my second coat. I put another coat on after this one that was a, a fairly heavy wet coat. And then uh, after that, uh, I started on with Tamiya Clear and wound up doing two coats of X-22 Clear. I like it. And Kevin likes it too. Getting back to the chassis here, uh, I was just going to paint that. I had primed it and I painted it with rattle can paint, which was uh, plenty fine for my purposes here. I spun it around there so I could get all sides of that uh, repaired trailer hitch. So now it was time to uh, do some detail work, which I'm doing with, uh, with Tamiya Silver. Uh, on the original model, the headlights and the grill and the bumper were all painted silver. And yeah, you know, I realize I probably should have filmed this from straight overhead, but um, such is life. So I uh, mixed up a batch of tire wash and then instead of painting it on with a brush, these tires were so small, I just threw them in the cup and uh, swished it around a little bit and then uh, pulled them out with a toothpick and set them on my little drying rack um, to let them dry. There wasn't a lot I could do with the windshield. Uh, there was kind of a blemish in the in the front window that I tried to polish out here but it was just a little too deep. And there's a crack in the back window which I really didn't want to handle the glass too much because I was afraid that I would um, expand that crack. So I did what I could to try to mitigate the problem on the front window with uh, the Novus products. And, uh, well, this was about as good as I could get it, so... And even though it wasn't very dirty, I did give the interior a little scrub-a-dub-dub -dub prior to assembly. I straightened out the little suspension piece by boiling it, and I'm ready to go. So here we are, uh, kind of a reminder of where we started. Uh, the model was in pretty good shape, but it was pretty chipped up, and the paint didn't have a great finish to it. 
Got kind of a saggy back end, and of course there was a broken trailer hitch. I don't think I mentioned I paid $2.17 for this model, and it was of course a part of a lot of cars that I purchased uh, from eBay. Uh, when I got done with my version, I did not paint the back bumper, uh, because if you notice on this original, the back bumper is not painted. But I did do the front bumper. Uh, my paint wound up a little bit bluer. I don't care. I like how it turned out. And without any further ado, here we go. The Matchbox 33B Ford Zephyr. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4, and I'll leave a light on for you. Subscribe if you will, share if you must. And please be safe. And I'll be damned if it ain't snowing here again. They're saying we're going to get another four to six inches. Honestly, I don't even know where I'm going to put it. But uh, I'll see you next time.